Understanding Cost Accounting Process Costing. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. You'll see our email address and phone number here. You'll also see a very good source, principlesofaccounting.com, that we use for ideas for our videos. We've talked about job costing in prior videos. Uh, costing a job based on a unique request that your client makes you. We used a, a tree service company for that. This is different. This is continuous flow of production. When products are produced by a continuous flow of materials through various departments, and I've always used the Levi's jeans as an example, the finished products are homogenous. They have the same characteristics. For example, wood pulp is processed into paper. All right? You can't really tell the batches of paper apart. It's a process, it's not a job. Gasoline is another good example. Gasoline's pumped out of the ground as crude oil. We send it to a refinery. We ship it to gas stations. The product's homogenous, homogeneous. We can't distinguish one gallon of gasoline from another. We can't separate gas production by job. So as a result, we can't cost the product that way. So how do we assign costs? Here's another example. An oil rig pays a worker $2,000 for a period of time to run an oil drill into the ocean to drill oil. How do we assign the labor cost to a specific gallon of gas? Well, the answer is we can't. Assigning direct labor of material costs to this type of process is difficult. And that should be your hint, the word process, because what we are going to talk about now is process costing. Let's define it. A method designed to allocate the cost of production to homogeneous units, homogeneous units. This is a continuous process that may involve multiple steps or departments. Types of costs. If you saw our management accounting for class, you saw these costs before. In that course, we stated that material, labor, and overhead would be assigned to work in process, then to finished goods. The same will occur in process costing. So here's a quick review, or you can go to the video. When we buy material and we haven't done anything with it, we call it raw material. I define that in the Levi factory as the denim sitting on the factory floor. WIP, or work in process, WIP, another area of the factory that has goods that are partially completed. So you've got some blue jeans that have been cut and sewn but not yet dyed into a color. And of course you've got finished goods, goods completed and packaged for delivery. So let's distinguish between process costing and job costing. How do we do it? Well, with job costing, we use the job cost sheet to assign costs by specific customer jobs. So for example, if we cut down a 30-foot tree at 100 Elm Street, we had a job cost sheet for that to collect all the costs for that job. Process costing is different. We assign cost by each process or department. So going to my Levi Jean example, we have a cutting department where the denim is cut, the raw material. A dye and coloring department where we take the cut denim and dye it a certain color. And finally, a sewing area. Once it's cut and dyed, we sew it. We add zippers, buttons, rhinestones, whatever. And those are our three departments that the jeans pass through. I'm going to flip out of PowerPoint. I'm going to go into Excel, and I want to show you a spreadsheet again similar to what we saw in the, in the Management 4 discussion. So here's our Levi Jean factory. Now some of these counts are familiar. We've got raw material down on the left. We've got wages payable, which is a new account, which represents our labor. And we've got factory overhead. We are applying those costs for utilities, interests that can't be directly tied to a pair of jeans, and we'll talk about how we do that later. But then the accounts on the right are new because we've taken work in process, which you saw in another video, and we've divided it into groups by process. So we've got a cutting department, a sewing department, and a dyeing color department, and they all have work in process. So a couple of key points at the bottom of the slide. Each work in process account for each process may receive material, 
labor, and overhead costs. In other words, all the accounts on the left. And I've got dollar signs for made up dollar amounts X, Y, and Z. Instead of a job cost sheet, once we get done, all the process costing companies generate a cost of production report. That's where you collect the data, cost of production report, not a job cost sheet. So what happens is these are asset accounts, raw material, labor, factory overhead. We start off with amounts on the left that we're going to assign that payable accounts probably better defined as uh, direct labor. We're going to credit in blue on the right hand side of each of the three accounts to move the costs into work in process. And the reason I've got X, Y, and Z on the left for all the work in process accounts is, is that each one of the processes may get one or more of the three costs. For example, let's say the sewing area has some costs for materials. When you do the work there, maybe you have to add on some denim and sew it on. You have a lot of labor costs because you're paying people to sew. And you're going to have some overhead costs for the heating and cooling of the factory, for incurring some of the interest expense, maybe the rent on the building. So all three of the WIP accounts, work in process, can have all three of the costs on the left. Okay? That's the end of part four. You'll find part five on YouTube soon. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd, STL, all one word. For live tutoring and live chat sessions on all these topics, stltest.net. Here's our email address and our phone number. We'll see you next time.